Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for us to check out our pages, uh, the national dailies, and find out what big stories are making the rounds. And to make sense of all of this, we do have Chris Nwandu, who is a publisher of the CKN News. Thank you, Mr. Chris, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Happy Demalud. Uh, we wish you the same. Thank you. All right, so I start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. And looking at the front page of the leadership newspaper, uh, it reads, bad roads everywhere despite 1.12, I take that again, bad roads everywhere despite 1.12 trillion allocation in five years. Bad roads everywhere despite 1.12 trillion naira allocation in five years. Uh, it, it's written on page four of the leadership newspaper. We suffer frequent vehicle breakdowns, attacks, Failed sports, uh, that's what transporters are quoted to say. And uh, moving away from that board caption, you have Idil Malud, insecurity, economic sabotage declining. That's what the president is quoted to say. Uh, pressure mounts on APC to sanction members over parallel congresses. That's also on page four. Uh, that's how much we can take on the leadership newspaper this morning. All right, so the Daily Independent. Consumers lament 25% rise in food prices in a month. Mobile phone prices move up over 20% in three months. Southeast consensus plan on PDP national secretary slot collapses. Rights abuse. El Zagzaki slams two billion naira suit against AGF and DSS. And court orders imm immigration to release Odile's passport. Policeman killed, building, vehicles raised as gunmen attack a Boeing police division headquarters. Also, Haneza to Buhari, ensure Kano is produced in court on Thursday, says agitation in Southeast reaction of a castrated alienation. And the federal government files amended charges against Namdi Kanu. Ifani Uba heads to court over Namdi Kanu, still on the same story. Uh, still um, on the Daily Independent, IPPIS, I now earn salary of a graduate assistant, says Unilori VC. Says no regrets making peace with ASU. And uh, Buhari at Idel Malud claims insecurity declining significantly. Tells bandits your days are numbered after Sokoto massacre. Those are the, uh, the stories on the Daily Independent. All right, let's check out the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. And the banner caption says, How bandits kill dozens in Sokoto market. Uh, that's boldly written. You find details on page three. Uh, several riders here. Government says 43 died, blames attacks on Zamfar operation. Different bandits groups mobilized to launch attacks. Security challenges or challenge surmountable. That's what the Sultan is quoted to say. And troops gone down 10 bandits in Kaduna. All of that on page three of the Daily Trust newspaper. Away from the bold caption, criminals conniving with monarchs in Bauchi. That's what the governor is quoted to say. And talking about the APC Congresses, implosion looms as losers fight back. Uh, more information will be available on page four of the Daily Trust newspaper. And just right. before we move away from the Daily Trust, Nigeria records 33 right. new COVID-19 deaths. Okay, all right, let's uh, move to the Punch newspapers uh, this morning and see what we can find. It says, APC convention under threat. Aggrieved party members uh, cite ruling against Buni. It says, Buni's panel not recognized by law. Activities will be illegal. Equity group. It says, also, we inform National Secretariat about our Congress. Uh, says, Lagos for Lagos. Kayamo's group heads for appeal court against Omar Gege's faction. Still on the point this morning, federal government budgets 104 billion naira to maintain and purchase generators in 2022. Less than 4% of Nigerians will be vaccinated by 2021, says the vice president. Uh, and also Nigeria producing 18 billion naira cassava, uh, missing in global markets, says the Fed 18 billion dollars, I beg your pardon, uh, cassava, missing in global markets, says the federal government. Still on the punch, and SARS at one. Insurance firms on veil reports pay nine billion naira claims on debts and property. An NPC pipeline security maintenance a gulp 32.56 billion naira in six months. And that's from a report. 
robbers crash and uh, kill UI students uh, and colleagues uh, call for prayers. Many traders killed as gunmen open fire in Sokoto market. And we can also find here 918 health centers shot as cholera cases soar. Masked gunmen kill LASG director, steal phone and files. Um, well, uh, Idel Maloud reports declining insecurity, Buhari tells media. Lawan and uh, governors preach, pre uh, preach peace, I beg your pardon. Mr. Chris Wandu, good morning once again. Thank you once again for having me. All right, now I want us to start the conversation in Sokoto. There are reports that about 49 people were killed in the attack in, on, on that market. It says bandits stormed the market, opened fire, and you know, basically just killed dozens of people randomly. Um, so let's start with that, you know, and of course, you know, with the presidency saying that the insecurity challenges are, you know, declining uh, currently. Well, is it not an irony um, that the president will come out to say that there has been a decline in insecurity? And um, not, he did not only say that, he went on to urge uh, journalists like us to um, report less of um, uh, misecurity and the attacks, that um, it should be more of a reporting of a, a decline. Uh, in uh, banditry, insecurity, killing and crest. But um, the story speaks for itself. You don't need to be a soothsayer yeah, to be able to. Journalists will only report what we see. Uh, we don't uh, conjure uh, stories from anywhere. If 39 people or 49 people were killed in Sokoto, we will say so. And that is what we, we are trying to do. We are, we are not covering anything. We are not picking up stories and just flashing on pages of newspapers on the uh, on television, radio, online, and the rest of them. What we are reporting is the situation. And uh, if you also recall, um, just uh, yesterday or day, uh, before, the chief of army staff visited the uh, uh, governor of Sokoto State, and he also raised the concern on the increase in attacks um, in um, Zaf, uh, Sokoto State, which uh, he alluded to be the as a result of the onslaught going on in Zamfara um, by the military, that most of the bandits, I don't, I don't like using that word bandits again, <laughs> terrorists, and they are now moving away from Zamfara, I mean, to neighboring states of uh, Zam um, Kaduna, uh, Sokoto, Yobe, and the like. So uh, it's quite unfortunate that uh, on a daily basis we are still seeing this level of uh, insecurity. And um, for the president, I think the president should be talking more on how he's going to. He and his um, uh, cabinet members, as well as the security chief, are going to cope the rise in cases of killing and banditry across uh, the country. I'm not just trying to suppress it. There is no way you can suppress such information, no matter how you are. Uh, no matter if you, you're a human being, you come to see that we are talking of human beings. We are not talking of goods. We are not talking of cows. We are not talking of uh, animals. We are talking of human beings. And most often are not, as I, I normally say. In the place where I come from, from the south, is the, there's this saying that when you see the corpse of someone that's being carried, it looks like a log of food. But if it touches you and it's a relative that is killed, then you feel the impact. So it's just unfortunate. The president, should, this is not the time for him to be coming out to telling us there's a decline or no decline. What we are seeing, there's nothing to show to for that. There is an increase in the attacks, and people are being killed, children are being kidnapped on a daily basis. In schools, nowhere is safe. South, the north, the southeast, the southwest, northeast, not everywhere. The level of insecurity is just unprecedented. All right, so let's uh, take a look at one of the stories on the leadership newspaper. And it talks about uh, the fact that transporters are complaining of the bad road infrastructure across the entire country. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, this is despite the fact that in the last five years, we're looking at 1.12 uh, uh, trillion naira that has been allocated. That is no news. Um, everybody knows that, uh, even the blind mind knows. And don't forget that um, close to over 80% of uh, movements in Nigeria is done through the road, more than 80%, anyway, because apart from um, road. The only alternative is air. 
the the railway is just coming up and it, it, it can't move uh, the volume that I think uh, that we, uh, <laughs> the number of people that you expect. So we are stuck with road. But if you go across the country, is the rate of um, the rate of bad roads across Nigeria is uh, is so terrible. Uh, and as I said it on this program about a few weeks back, I recently made a trip uh, from Abuja to Lagos um, uh, as the coordinator of the Celebrity Special Marshals in Nigeria. One of my mandates is also to have a look at what happens on the road and um, be able to see where we as Celebrity Marshals can come in especially when it comes to the issue of advocacy. And I realized that the, the rules are even worse than you thought. Even the, the, the rules that, uh, some of the rules that we had, that we used the sukuk, uh, I hope you still remember the sukuk. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Um, the font to ameliorate and be able to patch up or repair. Or they are practically bad again. The portion between Abuja and Lokoja, most portion of that road is practically bad. And, and we have been on that for years. Then when you're moving from Abuja through Kaba, then hitting um, Ekiti and uh, Ondo State, terrible, uh, terrible situations like that. Even at, at a point, the time I traveled, um, Akure has been cut off. People don't pass, um, motorists don't pass through Akure again. They have to do a detour to Ekiti to start finding their way towards um, Oyo State and rest. Of. And it's the same thing across board. So. Um, 1.3 uh, 2 trillion allocation in five years. That is huge. But what do we have to? Um, what have we? Don't do have to show for it. Uh, yes, but I can also say that there has been some level of uh, movement, especially within the Lagos, um, Shagamu, uh, Ibadan Expressway. Well, what what is it? Progress, and um, they are making some appreciable uh, impact on that road. I don't know that how long that is going to. But across board. That is the situation. And don't forget also that recently, Lubeng threatened to go on strike because of the bad road, because of what their members are facing. The attackers are just falling. Um, the petroleum products have been sprayed all over the, the spillage all over the place. And Lubeng threatened to go on strike, nationwide strike, because of the terrible situation we find ourselves. I think um, they had an agreement with the government and that they shared that. So Nigerians are going to... And the, the worst part of it is that bad road also increases the level of insecurity on the roads because most of them are not, you're going to see that most of these criminals um, and, and um, uh, criminals um, try to take advantage of those passports to be able to uh, perpetrate all those evil acts, um, um, kidnap people, um, and um, pick up people at, at, at length. So it's a combination of so many things. So I, I, Maybe um, I heard uh, from the Ministry of um, Works um, that um, the, the Minister of uh, Works and Housing, Babatule uh, Fashola, next month is going to address the nation. He's uh, holding a, a press conference um, to realize the, the achievement of his ministry in the past three years, since 2019. So uh, let's see what is going to come out. But for me, the situation is as bad as it comes. Top right corner of the Punch newspaper, it says federal government budgets 104 billion naira to maintain and purchase generators in 2022. Mr. Wandu. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a laughing matter because, um, you know, there used to be this joke that even when you go to, quote unquote, Nepal offices, you see they're using generators. And um, so, <laughs> so it's just a, unfortunate that this is where we find ourselves. Um, nothing seems to be working. We we'll talk about road now. Uh, we we'll talk about uh, other infrastructure. Uh, the same thing in the petroleum sector. The same, same thing uh, road housing uh, and electricity. And it's quite unfortunate that um, this current government, when it was campaigning in 2015 or 2014 before the election, gave some assurances to Nigerians, they made promises to Nigeria that they are going to upgrade the electricity from what it used to be. Um, and they even assured us, told us how many megawatts they are going to be adding to national grid on a yearly basis. Six years down the uh, line, nothing has been done. Absolutely nothing. In fact, we are worst off. Um, so, uh, at the point they were saying, they, 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 oh, we, are, we have reached the uh, 5,000 uh, mark, 
and uh, there are going to be more increases. But not in this that or you see on a daily basis collapse, collapse, and collapse. And worst case scenario, the problem we're also having is that we are even generating. But the, the, the basic problem we have also is that we cannot even distribute what we have, and we have privatized most of these uh, um, uh, electricity companies. And what do we have? Instead of, instead of that, what the government do on a monthly basis, they just meet and increase the tariff. Well, we don't have, we have a commensurate um, return in terms of uh, electricity. So if we are spending that, there is no home. I don't, I need anybody to manage it. There is no home in Nigeria where you don't find a single generator. Do you know what that means? Generating set. There is no home in Nigeria where you can find a generator set. Now, instead of depending on uh, public uh, power supply, now the now, people depend on generators. Now, uh, 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 the electricity companies are more like a, a standby for people. When it comes, that if at all it comes at all, then they, they just switch over. But that is how things have found out. The government is not doing enough. They have not added anything to the national grid. They have not increased the level of electricity as promised in 2020. Because that's only going back. When you talk, you say, oh, it was this bad. If the previous government have done this, they have done that, would that be the situation? But you have been on the stop for uh, starting for about six years. So what have you done? You can see that it's, it's stop, uh, the blame game has stopped. You don't see this government blaming former, gov um, former government again. That was what they started with. But you don't have anybody to blame because when you blame now, people ask you, what have you done in six years? So that is the situation, of, uh, situation we find ourselves. Okay, uh, let's also uh, still stay with the leadership newspaper. Another interesting one says, pressure mounts on APC to sanction members over power congresses. Uh, what do you make of this story? Uh, well, what happened in APC was a, was a story for two. Uh, we knew, some of us knew that it was going to happen. But uh, I personally didn't know that it would get to this point. Um, it's quite unfortunate what happened during the APC congresses on Saturday. There were prior uh, election, uh, practically all the states. Uh, the most surprising part is that of Lagos. I never knew that Lagos APC that so divided until I saw those uh, uh, those prior uh, congresses uh, on uh, on Sunday. I thought that APC had a full uh, grab of um, Lagos politics. Uh, from what is coming out, you can see that this <laughs> uh, has fallen apart, and the center can no longer hold. Um, in Delta, just read that uh, Kiyamu group is going to court to challenge the result of that election. You know, should state uh, the passion of the governor at sitting, uh, former governor now, the minister, Minister of Interior, Eric Beshadla, uh, <laughs> were able to dig it out. In Nogu State, uh, uh, Governor Abiodun and former Governor Mosun, it was the same thing. In Kano, uh, you can see that uh, the uh, governor and also the fashion of So practically everywhere there's just a problem. And um, uh, it seems that the AC, ABC uh, is going the road of PD, going through the PDP, what PDP went through um, before the 2015 election because it doesn't seem to be, the ABC got the power they wanted at the center and most of the states. But it seems that they've not been able to manage uh, they are successes, and that, has, that is uh, what is resulting, what is going on now. And it's also happened when you continue to see people imposing uh, candidates on their people. Um, that is, which is why um, I was very happy when the Senate, uh, Senate uh, went back on its initial um, passage of um, that bill, where you are not looking at direct primaries for uh, uh, parties. If you can have that in place, that can check me some of these problems that we have a bet. Um, what is happening is the soul of the party for 2023. Everything that is happening now is towards 2023. Everybody is trying to strategize to make sure that in a better advantage, uh, vintage position, and uh, to be able to align themselves for 2023. So I hope they'll be able to come out uh, because in the next few days they're supposed to hold their national. They've had the local government congresses, they had the world congresses, they've had the state congresses. The next one is national congress where they're going to elect national leaders of the party. I hope they'll be able to sort that. Today. They said that the reconciliation reconciliatory committee be, um, be headed by former governor of National State, uh, Senator Abdullahi. I hope you'll be able to come up with something. Because, but I still doubt it because don't forget that ABC initially also appointed uh, former chairman Akonde. They appointed a, a reconciliatory committee 
led by Akon. They nothing came out of it. After that, they reported another one led by Ashwadi Bola Ahmed. That one still didn't succeed. I don't know what I'd like to do in the next few weeks to be able to reconcile the foreign parties in the party. Oh. Like um, our guest mentioned yesterday, you know, it also paints a picture of what the um, you know the capabilities of the ruling party are with the uh, next general elections. Um, you know, and this really shed some light on on how you know um, you know they would be able to handle their own internal issues with regards to uh, the next general elections. Well, let, let's move away from there and go to the southeast. And sadly, of course, uh, Tuesdays you're always faced with talking about Namdi Kanu. Um, mostly maybe because of the sit at home that happens on Mondays. And of course, those stories always show up on Tuesdays in newspapers, Mr. Wandu. Uh, but I'm bringing this up um, because of his court case on Thursday. It says, Oaneza to Buhari, and this is on the Daily Independent, uh, and Shaw Kanu is produced in court on Thursday. It says, agitation in Southeast, a reaction of orchestrated alienation by the federal government. Um, as the federal government files amended charges against Namdi Kanu. And also, Ifan Yuba heads to court over Nandi Kanu. All right, uh, Mr. Wanda, let's get your thoughts. Yes, um, on SND, we uh, is put on, on the urging the federal government to make sure that um, uh, Nandi Kanu is brought to court on, th on Thursday. Um, since his arrest in Kenya, uh, nobody has seen him. And that in itself is also breeding uh, a lot of agitation. So we need to start with, and a lot of congestion here and there. Um, it is it, it is uh, rather unfortunate that uh, we still find ourselves where we are uh, present. But I believe that the federal government, through um, the uh, DSS, will make sure that the uh, big panel is brought to court on Thursday so that the trial could continue. And uh, but uh, as you also rightly said, the um, the, the um, additional charges have been um, brought forward by the AGF. Uh, now we are having the issue, talking about the issue of treason, we are talking about the issue of terrorism and the rest of them, they added to the charges against Nam Bikalu. But uh, I think that Nam Bikalu have, have enough lawyers that will be able to handle uh, his case and uh, we'll get this done as quickly as possible. Uh, on this, it's a true. Yes, it continued despite the advice of the of, of the various governors that um, people should go about their duties, but we still realize that as of yesterday, a lot of uh, people uh, still stayed at home. In fact, uh, I remember that um, as a directive from uh, IPO that people should go about their businesses, that it is only on Wednesday that people should stay at home. So what it means is that um, there was sit at home on Monday, but definitely there are going to be another sit at home on Thursday because Namdi Kanu will be coming to court or be going to court. That in itself is putting a lot of pressure, especially uh, on economic uh, situation in the South East. Um, the, most business people are complaining on daily basis that their businesses are just dying. And that in itself does not speak well for, uh, for the South East, uh, which is supposed to be an economic hub for the country. So, but I hope I believe, uh, as Hanese um, stated, uh, made in their statement that uh, by Thursday, we will come to see Nandu Khan physically. And that in itself, we will be able to clear most of this uh, allegation about his health and the rest of them. Also, you remember that his, um, his uh, lawyer also came out a uh, few days ago to urge his supporters to pray for him. And um, that uh, uh, so that uh, some of these things can just come out and just disappear. But the fact is that, irrespective of whatever the Namdi Kalu has done, he must have his day in court. Uh, he still remains a suspect, he's an accused. Yeah, and, but, uh, but Mr. Wandu, Mr. Mr. Wandu, that, that's like what we expect, and that's what you know. I, I believe a lot of Nigerians are you know, looking forward to, where um, suspects have their day in court, and of course, you know, a, a justice system that is you know, um, uh, without any blemish. Um, if he's found guilty of any of these crimes, then of course, you know, he, he gets what, you know, the, the time that he deserves for it. Um, but I, I want you to share your thoughts on how we still see these things play out. Um, the last time he was meant to be in court for some reason or the other, he just didn't show up. We've seen um, cases where the DSS say that uh, court uh, files that were meant to be presented uh, for a particular case were stolen by you know, one chance operators in Abuja. 
We've seen El Zagzaki currently suing the AGF and the DSS for 2 billion naira uh, because, of course, his passport, they've refused to give him his uh, international passport. And this is the reason that it was misplaced in the six years that he was in incarceration. Um, so I want you to share your thoughts on how petty and, and how, you know, our criminal justice system still uh, seems to be many, many years after uh, getting into a democratic uh, um, uh, country. Well, uh, what I can see is um, what I would describe as impunity on the part of security agencies. Um, there are so many things that our security agencies uh, do that and get away with that you not see in um, in in other climes. Um, in just recently, remember that uh, an MP was killed in UK, and um, the report we got is that um, the police agencies have been given about uh, seventy two hours um, to get the culprit and get him charged to court, and that's the, that's the way the system works. Then. So you must immediately charge the person because. If, despite what this person did, he still have some constitutional rights attached to him, fundamental human rights, which must not be breached, irrespective of whatever is So if we charge to court, if the court now say hold him, then they also have a certain period that they can hold him when the trial um, goes. But here, most of our security agencies just ignore the courts. Whatever the courts give, they give the ruling, they don't, they don't obey it. Look at what happened uh, to that Adasuki. You forgot it. Except there are so many courts judgment on Dasuki. And for years, the security agencies refused to uh, release him. Even as Azaki are talking about the same thing. There were several times that um, for me here, um, F SAN, um, uh, Falano had to go back to the court and say, You have given a diet, why are they not releasing? So uh, there's a lot of impunity going on. But uh, as I've said, every Nigerian, irrespective of whatever the person did or does, uh, still remains uh, innocent as a shine in the constitution until you, you have been proven guilty. So I hope and I believe and I look forward to um uh, the being brought to court and in court um, and having his day in court. The same thing is happening now with the whole case in, in Kotonu. And um, nobody seems to be hearing anything again. The last we heard about Igboho in Kotonu is that he was uh, sick and he was rushed to hospital. I don't even know the uh, I, I don't know the next thing, whether when he's coming to court, when he's going to court, whether that case will be heard and rest of them. But that is the kind of things you find in Africa, in, in our part of the world, that you don't see all over the world. And most of our laws are borrowed from these uh, foreign countries. And they see the way it is operated, they, they, they get them operated. But when he gets here, everybody does what he likes. But um, the AGF have uh, come up with seven additional charges that, uh, uh, that uh, Nandi Kalu would be. It's a bet. He has to be brought to court to answer some for some of it. But uh, you also look at it from the point that also Nam the girl at a point it didn't have matters when he just disappeared after getting the pay. But it's not that here not there because they also uh, there are some infraction where his house was uh, raided by military and they said that he was uh, some people wanted to kill him. So but let's wait it Thursday. After Thursday if the DSS and the federal government didn't do the net for them, they start shouting again. Okay. Uh, quickly, just before we let you go, uh, Nigeria records 33 new cases of, I mean, 33 new COVID-19 deaths, and that's according to the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, looking at the way we go about it, you, you don't seem to have uh, so much compliance. How many persons are wearing the nose masks and respecting the social distancing? The federal government came out recently to say that federal workers, uh, civil servants, will not be aligned to their offices until they take the job. Uh, I'm sure you are aware of that. And um, the time frame has been given to for that. Um, I also hear that some certain bodies are going to court to challenge that, saying that the federal government doesn't have that authority to force anybody to take uh, those vaccines. The state government tried it, and they are going to succeed. Um, for me, personally, uh, I think that everybody should take care of his personal um, health um, views and issues. We have more devastating um, diseases across Nigeria now. That is, if we are talking of cholera, I think cholera have killed more people in the last few days um, than even COVID-19. And, um, and some other health challenges here and there. So, for me, I believe that every Nigerian, the government seems to have been getting tired of asking Nigerians to do the 
the need for when it comes to COVID-19 and they seem to have left everybody to their fate. Everybody that thinks that is necessary, they believe that is necessary, you can take the jab. Um, but also taking the jab does not necessarily mean that you are immune from um, attacks and death. Just yesterday, uh, the former, the first um, uh, black, uh, Secretary, black of State. Secretary of State, yes, uh, Powell, died of COVID. And he took the, uh, taking the jab. So, to do the job, but not necessarily mean that I am not exposed to also other dangers, but I may encourage as many Nigerians as possible to do that. Then, the thought of that, do we also have enough vaccines to go around? This is a country of 200 million people. How many vaccines? Yeah, and, 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 and uh, the, the vice president also was in the news saying that we will only have about 4% of Nigerians vaccinated by 2022. Um, exactly. You can't see that. You can see that just about 4%. <laughs> what are we talking about? So some countries have hit about 60 to 70 percent already. We are talking about 4 percent in a few years' time. So that is the big challenge for me. Um, I think we should continue to push the narrative, media, and the rest of them on the need for people to take uh, this person. But some of our leaders are also not taking matters. With the so-called uh, those in government quarters, the governors, the commissioners, those in national assembly, and the rest of them, have they taken the person? Have they? Have you been seeing what uh, most of our um, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, our pastors and the rest of them have been talking about it. So, many, so many of them have been discouraging their members from taking it. So, I think it's an individual effort. Everybody should take care of it. Uh, if you feel that there is need for you to do that, you do that. But the problem is that if you get infected, there's a possibility that you may to infect other people that don't even are not even out. Do you see anybody wearing masks in Lagos any longer? I have not been seen. I don't know if there's any. So, Nigerians have practically <laughs> forgotten everything about them. Um, COVID-19. But let's continue to push the narrative, especially in the media, to let people know that this thing is still very dangerous. And as I said, uh, a general, Colin Powell, yesterday died because of COVID-19. Despite taking the job, that should be a lesson to so many people. All right. Uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, thank you very much, as always, uh, Tuesdays, for sharing your thoughts with us and for spending uh, this uh, public holiday morning with us. Wish you a very beautiful day ahead. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a nice day. You too. Thank okay. you. That's where we, of course, will be wrapping up off the press for this morning. We'll take a short break. When we come back, a uh, little bit of history for you. What happened on this day? We're moving to Iraq to tell you about uh, well, former president um, or former well, leader of Iraq, uh, Saddam Hussein. And right after that, our first major conversation for today, the uh, um, exchange rate crisis still exists in Nigeria, even after the suspension of Aboki FX. We'll be talking about that this morning. And of course, uh, also look out for our NSARS protest uh, conversation at 8.30. Good morning.